I tested out every single Ableton device that promises to speed up your workflow and finish your songs faster. Some of them deliver the promise, while some bring more problems than solutions. I'm about to walk you through the strengths and weaknesses of some of my top picks. In a good Max for Life fashion, they are not super expensive. Not you, Shortcut Buddy. Before we jump into Max for Life, Ableton's native solution deserves its flowers. Besides of new fancy icons, which tickle my urge to customize, you can now easily add something to your tags by placing the name here. So. That's gonna go for the snares, I guess. If you still don't know how to set up custom tags, then I highly suggest you to watch this seed to stage video. But is it much better than classic collections? I think it is, since you can add as many custom tags as you want. When it comes down to actually using instead of scrolling and customizing, you have two or even three options to choose. Since I showed Shortcut Buddy, I got some suggestions to check out Loader. And you guys made it once again. The main issue with Shortcut Buddy is loading third-party plugins and effects. There is an option to load VST and AU preset files, which by the way you can create by clicking on this disk icon on any plugin you want, with any settings you want actually, but uh, let me get it straight. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Loader takes the crown here since no matter what you drag, it loads it like it's no tomorrow. But there is a catch, it's very limited. I believe you can use more than one loader here, but just so you know, only this many shortcuts in one instance. Between those two, I will still choose the ugly one, but both share the same issue that the third one fixes. Out of nowhere, kill who or Killian or... Sorry, I won't butcher your name, came to turn life into FL Studio, but in a good way. Once again, Seed to Stage did, well, a deep dive how to install and use it, and I don't agree that it's harder than what you did to make those acquired plugins work. My short intro is, once you install it and create folders with usual or unusual naming convention, you can either drag and drop like this, or simply click to load anything into select the track. Here you have a couple of options where you want to place the loaded device. So let this washout rack by myself be our starting point and let's just say I want to add roar to it. I can load it before the washout rack or after washout rack like this. You also have an option to auto close this window once you load the device or just keep it open like that, but those are not the main reasons to love this device. You see, everything lives inside your user library. So once I would create a rack like for example this EQ and Roar and then simply save it to my user library as a test rack, Whenever I drag this to one of the folders I created inside this device folder, let's just say that's gonna be the EQ folder here. No test rack inside my EQ folder, but once I click this refresh button, there you go. We can load this test device right inside our session. And in fact, no matter which session you are in. Let's say this one is an old session and once I try to load a plugin with a keyboard shortcut, it doesn't work. So let's just try to load loader here. Obviously it's empty, so I then need to recall all of my plugins I had inside Loader and Shortcuts, which I already learned. By the way, count how many times I said Shortcut in this video. In case of Ableton Live Fast Item Loader by Killhu, all you really need to do is to drag it from your user library here to your old session, then map it to the keyboard shortcut you used to, and voila, now you have all of your shortcuts you created right here. And by the way, you can uh, make this window a little bit smaller. Depends on how many plugins, racks and devices you have here. An obvious yet very subjective downside to this device is that you still need to click instead of pressing a key command. But the good thing is you still save a lot of time of typing and clicking in comparison to using command plus F or in the worst case scrolling through all of your plugins. Now this floating window reminds me of probably my most used Ableton Live speed booster. I think I already mentioned it once, but we all know how it is with attention span nowadays. So I mostly use track presets to quickly load MIDI and audio tracks for all my synths. What a quirky preset actually. And it not only saves me a bunch of time with routing, since as you can see, you can 
predefine the inputs and outputs here, but also with effects and loading instruments, since you can load racks here and have them ready to go wherever you create a new track. The only bug I currently struggle with right now is that you can't use one key to load two tracks at once. For example, I can assign this MIDI track to be loaded with this key and the corresponding audio track with this key as well. But once I press it, it loads the default configuration, not my custom one. Now, this might be the least exciting one, but if you are old like me and you can't keep up with random clips inside your arrangement view, then yeah, you can rename clips based on your track name in just one click. If you enjoyed this one, then don't forget to leave a like and let me know if anything was helpful or you just simply like to listen to grown-ups talk about a couple of pixels and lines of code. In case you do, I have a playlist dedicated to Max for Life devices and a bunch of cool videos about them coming really soon.